Kim Graham Lawless is Berkeley Preparatory School's founding director of community engagement and service learning. Today, she will be talking to us about the power of thoughtful, committed citizens. So, it's 6.45 in the morning, and I am standing in a school cafeteria in one of DC's most violent neighborhoods. And although it's a Saturday, I'm not there alone. Close to 100 juniors are standing there with me, as well as their moms and their dads and their sisters and their brothers and their aunts, uncles, cousins, former and current teachers. The kids were there because I told the kids they had to be there. Their families were there because we invited them. And I was there because I was their college counselor, and it was the morning of their SAT. Now, if you have ever taken the SAT, you know that it's three hours and 45 minutes of a really good time. You probably also know that it doesn't start at 6.45 in the morning. But at KIPP DC College Preparatory, we had to do things a little bit differently. Our kids went to school in the District of Columbia, one of the lowest performing urban school districts in the country. Our local high school graduated about 39% of its students on time. Our neighborhood was home to the highest jobless rate and at one point had the highest percentage of murders in the city. Of the kids standing with me that day in the cafeteria, 86% of them qualified for free and reduced lunch. 87% of them would be the first in their family to go to college. A few would be the first in their family to graduate from high school. But at KIPP, we believe that demographics should not define destiny. So we set off on a journey to do something radically different to get these kids to and through college. We knew that part of that journey would involve them taking the SAT or the ACT, and we also assumed, correctly, that they would hate it. That it would feel boring and intimidating and totally foreign. So in the weeks leading up to the exam, we did everything that we could think of to help prepare the students for success. We teamed with an outside organization for test prep. We hung banners in the hall, counting down the days to the exam. We gave the kids motivational t-shirts. And because we knew that the kids had to show up to the exam on time and eat breakfast before the exam, we told them that they could invite anybody they wanted to a celebration breakfast in their honor at 6.45 a.m. SAT morning. The night before the exam, my colleagues and I stayed late into that cafeteria, and we posted all over the walls individualized and good luck messages, inspirational quotes, because we wanted the kids to know that there was a community of people that were standing behind them. And when the kids entered the cafeteria that next morning, they knew just that. But my favorite memory from the day wasn't actually the students. It was their families. Most of their parents had never been to college, and I'm assuming they never took the SAT. But they were so proud of their kids. And when the students got ready to leave to take the exam, their parents gave hugs, wiped back tears, took pictures, and even proclaimed with pride, my baby is taking the SAT. Our hard work paid off. We saw our student scores raise, on average, about 160 points. And that next June, when they graduated from high school, 100% of them have been accepted into college. So I love quotes. And perhaps my favorite is from the cultural anthropologist Margaret Mead, who says, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Today's theme is communities of practice. And what I can tell you is that there are small groups of thoughtful, committed citizens all over this country that are doing phenomenal things for under-resourced students. What I can also tell you is that sometimes they come from unexpected places. So the community that I grew up in is very different than that of the kids in the cafeteria. Both of my parents are private school educators, and I spent most of my life attending the schools where they work. I had access to a lot of resources. I had a lot of opportunities. And if I'm honest with you, I took a lot of that for granted. But perhaps most shocking to me as I reflect upon my teenage self 
is that I truly believe that every kid in America had access to the same quality of education that I had. And because I was a teenager, and thus knew everything, it wasn't until I got to college that I realized I was wrong. And in front of me was a world filled with achievement gaps and summer learning loss and a host of all of these other educational inequities that just made my blood boil. I didn't know how I could help, but I knew that I wanted to be part of the kind of community that Mead spoke about, one that was full of thoughtful, committed citizens who were trying to change these worlds for these kids. I was lucky when I found that community at KIPP, but I was inspired when I found that community at a private school. So it's been my experience that most schools, private or public, only have enough time and resources for the students that they serve. So when Berkeley Preparatory was advertising for a position that sole purpose would be to help the school help others, I was a little skeptical. But then I came to the interview, and I met a, a community of people who, just like my colleagues at KIPP, were thoughtful, committed citizens, dedicated to making a positive difference in the world. But perhaps what impressed me most was the headmaster. And I remember sitting in my interview and him telling me his vision, that he wanted to create a Saturday and summer program for low-income kids, free of charge, to stop summer learning loss and to get them to college. And he's talking to me about mentoring, and he's talking to me about tutoring, and I am literally sitting there thinking, like, who does this? And when the interview was over, I said to him, listen, whether I get this job or not, this just makes me feel better about the world. Well, despite that stellar interview answer, I did get the job. And this summer, we will launch the Berkeley Academy a program for low-income kids that will stop summer learning loss and get them to college. I say we because we will do it together. Our students, our parents, our alumni, our faculty, our staff, our local school district, we will all be part of this journey. And we will be yet another small group of thoughtful, committed citizens who are changing the world. I also learned while creating the Berkeley Academy that we're not alone. Successful private-public school partnerships exist all over this country, and they are full of exceptional educators that are doing phenomenal things for kids. Yet despite all of this, the challenges still exist. So let me take you back to those kids in the cafeteria. These are some of their faces, and these are their names. So these pieces of paper hung in our college counseling office. And as each kid was accepted into college, we would run over and we would color in their name. And we did this until each and every name was highlighted. I wish, maybe perhaps more than anything, that I could stand here today and tell you that all of these kids are in college and that they're doing great. But that's not the reality or the norm. A lot of them are. Many of them have dropped out or even in prison. In America today, only 8% of low-income youth will earn a college degree by the time they're 25. And perhaps more shocking, students from low-income families are five times more likely to drop out of high school. Nelson Mandela reminds us that education is the most powerful weapon we have to change the world. But I would argue that for students living in poverty, Education is the most effective weapon they have for changing their world. But the challenges that they face are totally overwhelming, and they need our help. So my challenge today to you is to join us, to help us ensure that demographics do not define destiny. And I wish I could tell you how to do that, but I can't. I can't because I don't know you well enough to know how you are uniquely qualified to meet one of the needs of those students. But what I can promise you is that you are. These problems can't be solved in isolation. They can only be solved through communities of practice, small groups of thoughtful, committed citizens who are willing to change the world. Thank you.